there gamers, I am Mike the Zorch, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, my new computer that's coming very soon. In fact, I've already ordered the parts. I'm getting an AMD system, an all AMD system, uh, AMD CPU and graphics card, 32 gigs of RAM. It's going to be a pretty good machine, be able to do a lot with it, be able to do a lot more video work with it, a lot more VR stuff. In fact, my VR series for touring Japan has been on hold because I've been waiting for this new machine and being able to get this new. The only reason why I'm able to get it is because of the the CARES Act. Uh, got that infusion of cash and I was able to buy the parts. Uh, it was just slightly over the amount that I got, which was twelve, which was eleven, uh, twelve hundred which is what I think everybody else had gotten. So I was able to just get parts just slightly over that amount to build a, a pretty decent machine. So I'm going to be using a existing case that I have for it, not the one for my existing gaming system, not the one for the current gaming system. That's a Liam Lee case that this machine is in, and it's an old System76 machine that we bought some time ago, but uh, the case is pretty beat up on the inside, and it's hard to mount, um, it's hard to mount stuff in there, also it's a, the micro ATX case, and the motherboard I'm getting is a full size ATX motherboard, so it won't fit in that case anyway. The case I've got, it is a um, half height desktop case so it's it'll support full ATX I think it will even support eATX but I, I didn't get that large a motherboard so the uh, I'm going from the machine that's in here currently is the old system 76 machine which I had gotten from Tigra originally back when I had some other money before and I had also gotten the laptop that I'm currently using right now with the same money. Um, the machine is a i7-4790 with 12, gig, you know, 12 gigs of DDR3 memory. And it's got a couple of hard drives in it. And I've got an eSATA card with an external eSATA uh, enclosure with a few drives in it for my Steam library, and I also have a 256 gig SSD on the inside for Star Citizen specifically. Because Star Citizen requires an SSD because of the way it works with um, OCS, Object Container Streaming. It needs fast access to the uh, game assets, so it has to load them very fast, and hard drives are too slow for that. Another game called Dual Universe is the same way. You need very high speed data access to for those games. A lot, lot of new games that are coming out are beginning to use a um, asset streaming technology of some kind. Something similar to OB, to to OCS or or something like OCS or something similar to it. They're starting to use technologies like that in order to eliminate things like pop-in and, and various other things. Like, um, right now, what I, what, I, what I saw of the Unreal 5 demo, I can tell you right now, it's using some kind of streaming technology that requires high-speed storage. In fact, it's for the PS5, which has an SSD on it. As a PCI Express SSD. Now, um, they say that it's faster than anything that's currently on PC. That's not true. <laughs> there are PCI Express SSDs that are twice as fast as what the PS5 is going to get. Twice as fast. Anyway, that's subject for another time. So, the current machine, i7-4790, 12 gigs of memory, a Radeon, um, R a Radeon RX 570 4 gig. I, I had a 270 2 gig before, and I upgraded to a um, 
574 gig. It went from 2 gig to 4 gig because a lot of games would require at least a minimum of 4 gigs of any memory. And, I mean, 2 gigs were starting to be a bottleneck. Also, um, I think just an older card and it wasn't working with a lot of the newer games, so I needed the horsepower for it. And I had to really dig to find this particular card because it was a ITX form factor card because this case is so small that if you put a full-size card in it, it just bumps up against the uh, rack for the, C for the CPU mounts. It bumps up against it and it covers some of the SATA ports also. So that's what's in that machine now. That machine's gonna be retired, taking the drives out of it and moving them into the new machine, be taking the drives out of the drive enclosure and putting them inside the new machine. So everything's gonna be internal. If, if I can do it, those drives will all be internal. They'll be running off of the existing solder controller or I might have to get a solder card because there is a, there will be a spare slot. There will be a spare uh, 8X PCI Express slot that I can put a card into. So if I have to get a internal SATA card to handle more hard drives, I will. And they're not that expensive to get. Not very expensive at all. But uh, the new machine uh, that will use a NZXT case that I have from an old AMD APU build that I, that I had put together when I saved money for another machine. Long time ago. No, well, it's that one. That one's well over more than five years old. It's an old AP. It's one of the first generation AMD APUs. One of the better APUs that they had at the time, and it, it served me really well. It ran Final Fantasy XIV. It ran a lot of the games that I had really well. I eventually did get the the um, the R9 270 to uh, replace the internal graphics card on the CPU and that's been serving me up until last year when I got this new card. But that APU machine, I'm going to be taking that out of there. In fact, that's I think it's already out of there because we were, we were trying to solve a problem with this machine. I think we took the board out of it to fix it get something off of it to fix it. I think it was the memory. Because I had a memory issue with this machine. But anyway, it took that out of there, so... It's still a pretty good uh, case. There's nothing wrong with it. I can you know, take the fans out of this existing case and use it in that machine. To replace one of the fans that's gone bad. So it, it's not a bad case. I mean, it doesn't have... It doesn't have a lot of the um, dust filters on it. I can do something about that. There are dust filters you can get that are magnetic that will um, cling to the steel surface of the case. So I can I can get that. I can find some I can find some magnetic mesh uh, filters to attach to the case itself deal with the problem of dust because dust is an issue around here we have to clean out our machines every few months or they'll start having issues but um use that case it has a usb 3.0 on the front this is a usb 3.1 machine but i can still use the 3.0 3.0 ports for it a front side just front side bus and uh on the inside, I'll be using a AMD uh, Ryzen 5 3600, not a 3600X, still a 3600. It's more than enough for VR, uh, some light video editing, and gaming, and streaming. Way more than enough. It's overkill, really, for that. It's really overkill for that. I could get... I could have gotten by with an R with a R3, but an R5, I decided to go with that. 3600 is a good processor. It comes with a Wraith cooler, an AMD Wraith cooler, which is more than enough to keep it cool. I'm not going to be overclocking this CPU, but 
but uh, but it's it's more than enough to keep it cool. Uh, the motherboard is a Asus ROG Strix uh, B450F gaming board. So it's a good board. It has the you know, you know the uh, IO shieldless back to it with the IO ports, so there's no IO shield to install in the case, which is uh, a good plus for that. Uh, Asus is known for, Asus and some others are known for uh, doing that with their motherboards. Uh, the memory manufacturer is one I'm not completely familiar with, but they're sold a lot on eBay. They're Ollie. O L O Y. It's 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 memory that was bundled with the prop, with the uh, motherboard. Uh, the for storage for the boot drive, I've got a uh, NVMe one terabyte um, M.2 drive from Intel. Of all things, that's coming. I was able to find one that's actually a decent price, a one terabyte for a decent price, M.2, not bad. So I'll be able to use that as a boot drive for the machine, so it'll start pretty quick. I might even install Star Citizen to that drive. It will be a, it will benefit from PCI Express speeds. So I'll be able to benefit from that. Uh, the GPU will be a Radeon RX 5600 XT with 6 gigs of memory. That is more than enough to run Half-Life Alex on its highest settings. More than enough to be able to play virtually anything right now that's currently out, even Star Citizen, on its highest settings at 1080p. So that, that is... That is more than enough graphics card. I could have gone with, I could have gone maybe spend another extra hundred to get the 5700 XT, but I decided to go with the 5600 XT. There really wasn't that significant a difference between the two cards, and it was cheaper. So I went with that one, and it will run the, the game I'm I, the specs and I'm targeting specifically are Half-Life Alex because it's a VR game that demands a lot from the machine that it runs on. It's more demanding than any other VR game that's been released since. So that's the specs that I've been specifically targeting. And then I have an existing SSD for that I was using for Star Citizen, which I could use for something else if I put Star Citizen on the one terabyte M.2 drive. I've got a bunch of other uh, three terabyte drives that are in my external enclosure that I can use for the rest of my Steam library that doesn't require an SSD for uh, high-speed loading. And I will be, uh, they will be internal now, but right now they're connecting at SATA 2 speeds. They're not connecting at SATA 3 speed right now because it's plugged into a PCI Express 2.0 slot. The controller card is in a PCI Express 2.0 slot. If it was a PCI Express 3.0 slot, it would be SATA 6, SATA 3, or SATA 6 gigabit a second, but it's not right now. So that sort of limits that speed. I haven't noticed any problems with it with a lot of games. So, I haven't had any issues there. Uh, then, I've got a 600 watt power supply. Uh, the Newegg has a calculator on their site that lets you know what kind of power draw you're going to need and what kind of PSU you're going to need. So, my machine is gonna, not going to draw any more than 425 watts and they're that's that power efficient now amd cpus and graphics cards have gotten that power efficient where i thought i was going to need at least a 700 or even a thousand watt, well, psu no i can get by with a 600 
though I've got a 500 in the case that I'm going to use right now, but it's an older, older one. It's a older Corsair PSU. The new one is an EVGA. I'm going to take that one out. It was a, it was a um, fully modular PSU that I have in there now, but I'm going to take that out because a lot, some of the ports don't work. Like the PCI Express cable that I had with it didn't work. So I had to actually plug in my graphics card from an, with an adapter to one of the Molex connectors. It's not ideal, but it works. But I'll be able to plug in the graphics card properly with this new power supply. A brand new power supply. It's an 80 plus bronze certified uh, PSU. So it's got Japanese capacitors, really good quality. So it will serve my machine. Um, the one thing you don't want to skimp on when you are building a machine is a PSU. Don't just go and buy the cheapest power supply that you can find because the stability of your machine is dependent upon how clean the delivery of the power is to your machine. The, as you see, computer components can't use AC current. AC current is alternating current. A computer requires DC current, which is direct current, constant flow of electrons. It requires that in order to function. It won't function with AC current, so it converts AC power to DC and supplies that to your machine. Now, when it when AC power comes over the power line, it picks up interference. It can pick it up from radio signals, cell towers, microwave signals, microwave towers, uh, cosmic rays. It, it can pick up all sorts of interference. You know, powerful radio signals from, let's say, you have a um, an airport or a air force base nearby. It will pick up interference from the radar and their um, radio, and that will be that will be brought into your home as noise on the line, and that can interfere with electronics. If it if it is brought into, it can interfere with electronics and um, appliances. It can even damage the equipment. But your PSU has to be able to clean that out, filter that out, and deliver clean power to your internal components. That's why you need a good PSU. A good PSU will clean that signal. It will, it will deliver a, uh, I forget what they call it, it's a, it's a certain sine wave that works best with computer electronics. It will generate a generate a sine wave that will basically get rid of all that interference that's on on the line and the way the power lines are here in this area we definitely need it because um you know when i'm sitting cooking in the kitchen i have the hood light on i see it flicker from time to time because something around here in the neighborhood just draw just yanks on the power so hard that it just dims the lights in the entire place. We don't have anything in the house that tugs on the power that hard. There's nothing in this house that does that. Not even the refrigerators do that. So there's something in the neighborhood that just tugs on the power so hard that it um, makes the lights dim and flickers and we get brownouts occasionally. So you need a good PSU to be in there. That's what I'm getting. And plus, uh, it's going to be on UPS. That helps too. And UPS will help clean and filter that pop, filter the power on the line. So it'll it's getting clean power from the UPS, and it'll get clean power when it converts AC to DC, which is good for the computer. That will give it longevity. That will make it last a long time. I, I expect this machine to last me at least a good five, six, seven. Last me quite a while. Because it's a B450. Well, it's not an X570. I, X570 was a little out of my price range. I could have gone with that. But I, I went with a B450. That still supports the CPU. 
and it's an AM4 socket, so I do have I do have uh, upgrade options for the CPU if I ever wanted to upgrade to uh, a Ryzen 7. Let's say I'd say I wanted to go to a third gen Ryzen 7. Let's say the fourth gen Ryzen CPUs came out, and I had the money to get a Ryzen 7 because the prices came down because there's demand for the new CPUs. I could do that. I would have that um, upgrade avenue available to me. So that's why I chose what I'm getting. I could have waited. In fact, I, I debated waiting uh, for the new um, AMD um, for the new AMD um, Ryzen. 3 3300X to come out. Now it's a it's a budget CPU, low much lower priced than the one I've one I bought. It's a budget CPU that forgot it's a budget CPU. I mean this thing has got some crazy performance to it. But it requires a new motherboard it requires a new motherboard chipset. And I've known Tiger long enough to know don't buy bleeding edge. Back when a black back when Elder Scrolls Oblivion was new, back when it was just released, he built a dual Nvidia SLI machine just to play Oblivion on really high settings. I mean it, it was gorgeous at the time had the bloom effect on and this thing just absolutely looked incredible but because it was bleeding edge technology because the cpu was just less than a week old the motherboard technology was less than a few months just less than a month old none of the drivers were mature enough the bios wasn't mature and this thing crashed constantly and he set the machine aside for a couple of years didn't even touch it for a long time and he spent a lot of money on it and he had got himself a different machine different gaming machine and um, was playing stuff with that he had bought a 360 and played a played oblivion with that in fact I played oblivion with a three with a 360 before I played it on PC but that and one other time he built a machine taught me never to buy Bleeding Edge. Never to wait for the newest stuff and go for the absolutely newest thing because it's always, always going to have some kind of issues in, in the beginning. You have to at least wait six months or more for mature drivers and mature BIOS to come out or else you're going to have a really bad time and even he's learned not to do that with the new machine he currently has he didn't go with bleeding edge I mean the only somewhat newer thing he has is his graphics card and he doesn't even have an RTX card he just has a, a, a 1080 in there he doesn't even have a 1080 Ti but um, the RTX cards were new when he built his machine. They were brand new. And he didn't get it because he knew that the drivers and, and other things were going to be an issue at the time. So, we've learned, don't go bleeding edge. Anyway, um, that's why I decided to just go ahead and buy the parts for this new machine and go with it from there. So the first parts will begin arriving this week. Um, I won't get everything until the first or second week of next month. So I won't be putting the new machine together anytime soon. Uh, I may do a video about it, maybe an unboxing video of some of the stuff maybe um a video where we put the machine together might do that 
I don't know if we're going to do that or not. I, I, I'd like to. We tried doing that with his machine when we built it. But uh, with Tiger's machine that he currently has. But uh, that didn't work out very well. So we'll see what happens. I'll definitely be doing a video talking about the new machine once it's finished. Doing an inaugural live stream from that machine of something. Uh, I might do Half-Life Alex. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, uh, that's to let you know that um, the new machine's on the way. And uh, I'll be able to do a lot of stuff with it, and I gave you some uh, some uh, computer building advice at the same time. I've been Mike Desorch. See you guys next time.